Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your hosts, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is your number one source for all your sports betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers podcast. I'm Marcus Dash here with legendary 76ers point guard Eric Snow and my brother Tasia Dash. Guys, um, not really much has gone on this week. Uh, we've had maybe some confirmation on what the lie was. That's like the biggest story of the week, I would say. Um, so that's that's pretty good. No no, uh, no second rounds being taken away from us at this point. Um, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but one one thing I did come out uh, today, so um, I think Liberty Ballers did an article with uh, Tyrese Maxey, um, and they asked him um, about the awkwardness that's going to be – if he's ready for the awkwardness that's going to be coming during training camp with this whole Harden thing kind of looming. And he said, we've dealt with this before, so it's not really a, a new thing for, for him. Um, so, Eric, I, I wanted to ask you, we were talking a little bit beforehand about about this, but uh, what what do you what do you make of Maxey saying it's not – it's nothing new? I mean, that's just, you know – thought process and that's um the right correct thing to say <laughs> that's um, true i i don't believe it <laughs> I, I don't believe it's not that i don't think that, that i think he's not telling the truth i think he wants to b- believe that and i think that's what he feels is it is for right now yeah in august um but as camp comes as it becomes closer to camp the conversation is going to be about James showing up, is he still there? Trade, will he be traded? If, if you have all of that focus there, that's that's different. Um, you have a guy that is capable of being there and capable of healthy, helping is healthy and not wanting to be there versus with Ben, it was all of the situations before him not wanting to be there, then him not being healthy um, and him not being the same even to this day. Where where James is different, like you 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 looking at a guy that had nineteen eleven last year and you know was looked upon to come back has a has a contract last year of his deal versus a guy that was you know had many many years left, um, and I and and I think it's not more importantly, but where I think is drastically different is the locker room presence, locker room influence. James still has many friends in there, guys that I know he has good relationships with that aren't going to turn the back to him. So guys are professional, but we're still friends. So that I think this has the this has more of a chance to splinter a locker room more than I think the situation in previously with being does. And splitting the locker room can be players versus management too. Yeah. Plus, we've had so many changes since that incident, right? So it's like there's less stability now because of those types of changes that have happened. We've had another coach, other players get treated. So it's like, yeah, it's not the same team. Yeah, it's not the same thing because it's happened again and again. So it's it's the more it keeps happening, you can compare it to the situations, but. It's different. Yeah. It's like taking a hit when you're like 18 and taking that same hit when you're like 35. Yeah, I've taken that hit before, but it's a little different because it's not the same time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, also, like, yeah, not to mention a lot of guys who aren't who weren't on that roster a couple of years back. So you're kind of like getting those guys up to speed with like how to handle these things. Like when it does happen, Eric, like stuff like this, obviously you didn't deal with this kind of situation when you played, but like. I didn't deal with what? With this like type of situation, the, the, like a holdout going into a season, like the kind of awkwardness of the Simmons thing and, and all that, because um, that was kind of a unique. I mean, situation. I did, but nothing compares to LB and Coach Brown and the attention that 
that came with that. But, right. Yeah. yeah. I'd say <laughs> he's dealt with awkward. Carry on with your conversation, but I, yeah, but trust me, yeah, it's different. Well, I've well, well, dealt with awkwardness before. You're not, like, not this not, exact Not this type of awkwardness. That's awkwardness, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, like, when it comes to, and obviously you guys are professional and, like, it's a business and stuff, but, like, when do you guys do, like, the, I guess the PR people or the media people within the Sixers organization kind of, like, give you guys kind of briefs on how to handle certain questions when it comes to this kind of stuff? Like, do you guys have, like, game plans before, like, you get questioned about these types of situations? Um, no, that's more college. You kind of do that. But mm-hmm. in the pro, you can give teams, give guys talking points. Um, or, but more than likely, a guy can say whatever he wants to say. Yeah. Um, it's consequences for, as we can see, if guys saying things, yeah. but you, a team can't come in and, and tell them what to say. You could probably say, hey, that, you know, you probably don't want to touch this, or you probably just want to tell them no comment, or I'll let the team address that. You know, like mm-hmm. they can come and tell you, kind of push it away. Um, and kind of give you some advice on that, but ultimately it's up to you to, to decide what you're going to say. Uh, or if a player, I guess, is like goes to his managers, he's like, I don't want to say anything that's going to get me in trouble. Well, what, what, what do you, what can't, what don't you want me to say right now? Yeah, know? but most guys aren't going to aren't going to do that. It's it's just the guys are more inclined to say, I don't want to talk. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Than that, so 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 if they required to talk or talk. Um, you know, a good PR person would kind of tell them, hey, if they ask this, kind of like take it in a different direction or or they may go to the media and be like, hey, you know, any basketball questions not related to James Harden and Duramori, he's yeah. willing to he's willing to answer. Yeah. Anything about that, we're not answering at this time. Okay. Now, they can do that. So now you've addressed it, so now the player never even has to address it. Mm-hmm. And if they ask a question, it's up to that PR person that's sitting right there to, no, nah, that's the next question. We're not going to answer that. Mm-hmm. And they, that's their job. They can do that. Yeah. Now, you can't do that for a, lo- a while. <laughs> you can't do it every time, but you can do it in, in some instances until you're kind of ready to address it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or, you, you know, more than anything, you let the coach – if the GM decides to talk and maybe one player that you feel can handle it, and usually like with us, I was that guy or Aaron was that guy. Um, and then we, nobody else really talked about it. And that's how you handle it. You just put who you want out there to talk about it. Mm-hmm. AI wasn't that guy? To do, no, no. AI wasn't the, AI, was, <laughs> AI, AI talked, but AI was not that guy to, you know, Kind of spokesperson. Yeah. He didn't yeah. want to be either. So I mean, no, was, yeah, <laughs> kind of got that. back from something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, you got this. You probably then you're good at this, man. Yeah, y'all good. Yeah, yeah, we good. Go ahead, East. No, go ahead, East. <laughs> go ahead, Blue. Go ahead, Blue. You got it. Good. Now you do such a good job at it. I don't want to interrupt that. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. I just want to play. I'm not trying to hear all that talking. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember during the whole Simmons thing, I think wasn't I think Tobias was the uh, the first one to come out of during that whole training camp uh, of those press conferences that that time. He was the first one to come out and talk about it. I guess he might he might be the um, the, the, the lead like spokesperson for the, for the squad, and he was probably the most the veteran guy on that on that on that Simmons team at the time. I mean, didn't Maxi just speak about it? Well, yeah, I was talking about the Simmons thing, the Harden thing. Yeah, yeah, I guess Maxi makes Maxi technically speaking about it. Yeah. 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 Even though he didn't say anything, but I'm just saying, yeah. It's yeah. a good way to get around it, too. Like, yeah, we've seen that before. Been there, done that. No one's going to really. It's not going to stop the questions, though. I mean, you know, that's the whole media. They had, that's what it's going to be about, you know, mm-hmm. based on what happens between now and then. Yep. If it's not addressed, then that's going to dominate the conversation. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Howard Askin's going to get in there. Oh, I ask his questions. <laughs> yeah, but what, I mean, how we're no different than anybody else. Yeah. True. I, I guess it's the way he comes off when he asks the questions. That I, I don't know. Just very. So I take it you're not a Howard Eskin fan. No, I I don't like the the flip flop he's had throughout the the years, where it's like he hated Doc. He, he, he was Doc's one of the biggest. 
he probably he called out Doc a lot. We fire Doc, and then all of a sudden he goes to like becoming a Doc defender and saying, "Oh, Morris should be the one out. He's a you know uh, using uh, Doc as a scapegoat. He needs to be the one out." So it's like I don't I don't know. This past season's kind of he's kind of rubbed me off the wrong way this this off season with the going from being a uh, anti Doc to being anti Mori, and all of a sudden being a Doc fan. It's like what? Sounds like radio to me. Yeah. Yeah. Talking out of both sides of their mouth. No, nah, I mean, it's just, you know, they got you listening, right? It's true. Got us talking about it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so you talk about it, as soon as you have a, an opinion, either way, they've done their job. Yeah. I thought he was recent with that, but he dogged Maury saying he's a fraud because he's too hard to make. I don't like him because he's too hard to make, like, deals with or something. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Whatever. This is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you're easy um, to make if you're easy to make deals with that means you're probably getting taken to the woodshed <laughs> you know, as a gm i don't think you want to be easy to make deals with i don't think you want people to say that about you easy to work with one thing but easy to make deals with i mean nanny angel is easy to make deals with and nobody says that he is a bad gm just depends on what the deals you make And also having rings too would also kind of cement cement him being a good GM too. That's that's, that's why we're dogging for it. Yeah, yeah, that's the ultimate thing. Yeah. Um, so we talked about Maxi in the opener. Um, so uh, this week, um, Kendrick ESPN's Kendrick Perkins uh, had, a, had a had a bit of a hot take on um, uh, ESPN's first take, saying um, that he thinks the Sixers um, should get ahead of Embiid asking out in the next year or two. Uh, and just overhaul the entire roster and build around Tyrese Maxey, that he's the future of the Sixers, and they need to build around him and get ahead of Embiid asking out and trade him. Stephen A. Smith didn't agree. He thinks they need to build around Maxey and Embiid, and that's what they're trying to do. Uh, but that was his uh, take to uh, let uh, Maxey be the uh, run the show in Philadelphia and build around him. Um, what do you guys think about uh, that that potential uh, or Kendrick Perkins' take there? What do you mean? What do I think? Do you think yeah, that's something, do you think that's right. do you think that should be on the table? Do you think that we should get ahead? Uh, that's something that they should ponder to get ahead of this whole and be potentially asking out in two years. So you mean so you mean someone in the Sixers organization is going to go and say, "Hey, we want to trade the MVP because he might leave." That's what you're asking me. Yeah, uh, I think you should know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> Are there, are, are there any valid points to doing that? Or is there anything plus on to doing that? Like, do you think you'd get that much more for someone before they ask out? In, in, in Embiid's case, particularly. No, you, you can't. There's, there's some guys in the league. It's not many that you just, you can't trade on your own. Joel won the MVP is one of those guys. Giannis, Jokic, Steph. LeBron, you just can't trade them on your own. You can't make that decision. Yeah. What ownership is going to be like? What? And I know a lot of these owners aren't as Jerry Jones and hands-on as, as most. But what owner is going to be like, what do you mean we're trading them? Like, for who? For what? Like, yeah. how, how can you convince? How can Moore go in right now and convince ownership to trade him? I think the only way would be to say, look at the Dame situation. Once he asks out, we will get like a fraction of what we'll get now. That Okay, like, so and you trading him, you're trading him to get what? Exactly. Yeah. So know. that's the next question. Yeah, yeah okay. You, you convinced me that you want to trade him. Now, what, what are we getting in return? And don't say Miami because young people in Philly will be losing their mind if you talk about anything <laughs> with Miami. To OKC for one of the Williamses, Chet Holmgren, and like five first round picks. Okay. If we knew who those five, you know, if we knew who those first round picks were going to be, then, you know, yeah. If, if you're saying, okay, let's become the new Oklahoma City of the East. Yeah, pretty if, much. If you're okay be, be, becoming that, then yeah, go ahead and do it. 
But you can't tell me you finished third, third best record in the league and you have the MVP and we're going to start over? Yeah. Yeah. Start, I mean, start over to then do what? Look for the next Joel Embiid. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and as much as I like Maxi, it's just like you're going to trade Joel and start over to build – Around your second best player? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think they just kind of put that on there for conversation. Uh, I don't, I don't, I can't. I can't believe that Kendrick really feel that way. It was surprising to hear him say that. Yeah, maybe it's game related, though. I think, that, I think yeah. that was just a debate conversation and people just take sides. Sometimes I think they put stuff on television and they just tell people to pick sides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More so yeah. than they really like actually believe it. Some things I just I just don't think they can really feel that way, especially with Kendrick being a big guy, a center, and he's like, get rid of a center. Like, oh, oh I can't really. Unless that's his ball, that, that's his Boston side talking. Maybe he wants Philadelphia just out of the conversation altogether. And Kendrick and Kendrick's one of the main guys behind uh, uh, MB getting you know helping to get MVP. Apparently, you know, he made that huge push for him last year. So. It's funny that he's the guy who helped him do that, but at the same time, we're like, well, now you need to trade him. I mean, I, I mean, I see the, I see the logic from a standpoint of you don't want to be in a situation where you have no leverage and you, you know, he's forcing the trade and you're gonna to have to force trade him to a team you don't really want to trade him to and all of that. Now, I see avoiding all of that, but I don't see the writing on the wall. That that's close. Yes. Yeah. And and, this, and I believe that t- conversation was based off a report that said the Knicks in Miami are really monitoring no, the situation. No, no, I, I, no, I'll say this. Without any more success this season, I think that conversation heats up. You don't think he's going to wait to see what Maury's big plan for next season is? No, I'm saying I think the conversation heats up because, but I don't think that's just from the Sixer standpoint too. I think the conversation heats up from Joel's standpoint. I do not think that it's just people assuming Joel going to these other teams or these other these so-called other teams' names just popping up. I don't. I don't think it's just coincidence. It's coming yeah. from somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I don't think any of this happens anytime soon. He's got four years remaining. Um, yeah, I mean, look, but look, look, look. I mean, just like just like Giannis came out and said, I'm not signing the extension until they commit to winning. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the guys, they aren't shy about saying that they aren't shy about telling how they feel so if who, who's to say like if the Sixers don't come out and kind of the performance if it's going if he feels like it's going downhill hey man it, it could head that way yeah yeah that's why I think especially if they keep they said they had that report like a month ago about the uh, MB being in contact with Maury and, and and leadership and management and ownership about like the direction and the plan and and the cap space next year. So I would assume that he would at least wait to see what comes of that before he was like, all right, I saw your big plan. I'm not impressed. Um, We're still in the same position we were two years ago and then four years ago. It's time. Like I I gave it, I gave it Maury's teardown plan. I saw what the finished product was. Let's go. Like, Right. Um, and at that point, he'd still have two years. Let's say he does it in two years from now. He'd still have two years remaining. He'd be in his early 30s. I still think you'd get so much for him. Like, I, to, to Kendrick's argument, yeah, you get a hall for him right now, but would you get that much more than you get for him in two years? No, you can get more. You can, get, you can command more. Um, how much I mean, How much more? The Chiefs have two years. You can command more, more, but what I'm saying is you, you can command more than you will in two years because two years, a, a big like Joel would not be looked at as the same no matter what. Um, so you can get more, but the issue is what, what is that more going to mean for right now? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that more going to mean much right now if you got all these, you know, future draft picks? So future draft picks don't win games. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, and also the process years will tell you, you know, a lot of these draft picks are a crapshoot. I mean, it's not it's not a guarantee you're going to get a star. Yeah, they don't win games. They're great, but they don't win games. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Stephen A's counter to because I mean Kendrick was like you know the Sixers have, have kind of failed Embiid you know and not not being able to win um, and then Stephen A. Smith kind of countered to that saying well Embiid hasn't really shown up in the playoffs to help the Sixers get to that point either so it's kind of a you know uh, but hopefully it's a two two to three year conversation away from actually happening but I think every off season the, the more the more we don't get to that set that that next round of the playoffs that's going to continue to pop up um, yeah yeah. So hopefully they can uh, just put a quell on that for a little bit if we get to the Easter Conference uh, finals this year in the, in the in the famous punt season. Yeah, it's not a punt season. No, no one's saying the punt season. You're saying punt season. No one's saying punt season besides you, buddy. <laughs> I got hope right now. We're in August right now. I still have hope. You say that until we get Marcus Morris, Covington, and uh, and Batum for uh, James Harden, and see what you think about this punt season. If that's what happens, that's the, the dumbest thing ever because we could have done that two months ago and we wouldn't have this whole this whole uh, drama um, with, with Harden if he ends up settling for the same deal he got offered two months ago. Okay. Even throw Terrence Mann in there. It's still a pun season. That's not, that's not making a big dent. I'd be, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Second or a third round of that one, huh? With Terrence Mann's going to put us over the edge. And, and Ma- the- Max is about <laughs> average 30 this year, dude. We're going to have two guys average 30 this year with Maxi and <laughs> that. That's. The That's possibility. Yeah. Um, okay, so talking about James Harden, the next topic. So uh, James Harden was fined this week $100,000 for his recent comments about Daryl Morey. Um, so my question to you guys is, that, do we think it was fair to fine him for speaking his mind? And yeah, we were just talking about this. Yeah. Um, I guess it's – you have a collective bargaining agreement. And there are certain things in there you can and can't do. And if you do them, it's up to the discretion of the league whether you can be fine. Um, I guess based on what he said, you can you can you can fine him. It's a steep and a steep amount for that fine. Um, I think the max is one hundred and fifty. No, by the way, no matter what the guys, you know, because it's based on salary, I believe it didn't used to be like that. It was flat across the board. Where I think believe now it's kind of salary based. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's kind of hard because we don't know the full context if what James is saying is correct. He did lie to him. Then you you, you are, you know, I guess you got to go through certain steps to voice your displeasure. And I guess you go through the union and you file a grievance or whatever you do with the league and say he wasn't honest. There's different steps in order to do that. So it all comes down to publicly saying things where the league is now trying to get more control over what guys are saying critically against the team or or demanding the trade publicly. So I think he can voice his opinion, but it's certain steps or certain ways you have to do that. So I don't think there was anything based on what he did to avoid a fine. I mean, I think the amount is probably, you know, questionable. Um, but there are ways to kind of handle this. It's just a no other way to handle this, and all of us know. If this helped him get traded like a month earlier than he would have gotten traded – do you think that's worth it for that 100k fine? He's like, hey, for his sake, it's probably worth it. I mean, yeah. you, know, you, you know, you don't have to go back to Philly. You want to do whatever, you know. Also, I think for his sake, you know, he where he he's out of his out of his pocket, but he's also not having to rent a house or buy a new home. <laughs> you know, so it's and you you know knowing where you're going to go like that matters. Guys like being, you know, guys don't like being traded, but they really don't like being traded during the season. And he gets five extra million if he's traded before game one. 
So there's a that that hundred thousand will go towards a, a nice cause if he gets <laughs> if, that, if that helped him get traded before the season starts. Yeah. Um, my question also is, and they might have covered it in their statement. I, I, I maybe I didn't read it thoroughly enough. Is it for the liar comment, or is it for the "I'll never play on a franchise with that's run by Maury anymore"? Um, I think it's, it's all of them combined. If I believe, um, I believe it's the liar comment publicly. I'll never play on that team and everything publicly. Um, so I think it's all of it collectively making those statements public. Yeah, so all that combined is a kind of like um, a passive, well, not really a passive, but a roundabout way of demanding a trade. It's like, you lie for not trading me. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all made public. So, so a public demonstration of the team or anything negative towards the team publicly um, and demanding a trade or not wanting to be at a place is basically saying I want to, is demanding a trade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, doing that all publicly is what they supposedly now are trying to stop guys from doing. The funny thing is, it's like, teams, you know, because every, like every, just like the collective bargaining agreement and everything else, um, it's hard to police, you know, teams can't police other teams. So they want, they want the player to do it. Just like salary cap. You don't, you don't need a salary cap. It just seems to decide how much they're going to pay. And that's what you pay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you have some teams that's going to be like, yeah, that's awesome. yeah, I'm not going to spend that much and then go out and spend more than that. So the, dis- so the agreement is really between teams. Also, like, how true is that anyway? I'll never play for a, a Daryl Morey runner. Okay, well, let's say the Sixers fire Daryl Morey. Are you going to come back? Are you can come to training camp now in the, in the Philadelphia? I mean, Was based it? on what he said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, he's like, all right, well, it's cool. Let's play. Let's play for my. Business. I don't. I feel like I'm worth more than. Yeah. 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 Yep. I don't know if that would happen that smoothly, but. Um, in, in regards to the the liar comment, um, so uh, this week we found out what the lie was. Um, it stemmed from the Sixers saying they trade him quickly if he opted in, and not about a wink wink deal. Uh, which I think we, we some of us thought that's what it was um, that he was talking about. Uh, what do you guys think ab- about still that? Do. Yeah, I think I think it was all a part of the lie. Mm. I believe that trade it, you're trading quickly. If you opt in, we trade you. Getting him a deal, yeah, I believe it. All. I mean, that's I believe that it's more than more than just a trade request. Mm. That's my belief. But, you know, you have to go by what James and what they all say. James 8, that's what they say. But, you know, if I was a betting man, I would bet that it's more than that. Yeah, I still don't buy that. I, I, there's no way your 15 or whatever, 10-year relationship with a guy is ruined because he lied about how fast he would trade you. I just I, – I can't see how that's – that's what makes yeah, you that's what I'm saying. So, so never so speak one again. I and I never play for him because he didn't trade me in, fast enough. Like because he because he hasn't traded me to where I wanted to be traded. Yeah, that's it's more than that. Yeah. Now just, it's now it's the only way is not is like if I mean they have a good enough relationship or had a good enough relationship to where Daryl's really talking to James and not really Daryl talking to the agent. If that's the case, and he says to James, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to send you home and allow you to play in your hometown. I'm going to get this done right away. No, yeah, I mean, if it happened like that, then you telling the guy like that to his face, and he gets excited about it, and then all of a sudden you're like, I don't like what they send us. Because it's not like the Clippers are like, we don't want James. It's a Sixers saying we don't like what y'all offer. It's a little bit of both. No, it's not. I, well, it's also Clippers saying like, oh, we do want him. Well, but the, Clippers, not- the Clippers made an offer. They're saying they want him. Now, if you don't like the offer, you can't say that they don't. They, they made an offer, right? 
James did say a month ago, there's a balance between giving a player what he wants and a team being compensated fairly for the good player. Right. So, I mean, he understands that part of it. He understands that, that you, yeah, yeah, but we understand that, but we also understand if the numbers work, then it's an offer. Value wise though. If the numbers work, is it or is it not an offer? It's an offer. And yes. It's a bell salary cap permitted offer. Sure. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So that means it's able to work. So salary, then, salary wise. Yes. yes, salary wise. Salary wise. So, like I've said before, if you have a salary work deal, and if you want to do what's best for the player, you make it work. But there's but a balance. You are, but you aren't doing what's best for the player. You're doing what's best for the team. I still think there's a balance there, though, right? So so if you value the player, then pay the player. And we don't have this conversation. <laughs> We're going to do this again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Because, because right now the Sixers value more than everyone else. No one wants to pay him anything. No, the Sixers don't value him. They do though. They're they're giving him 35 right now, 36. No one else is going to give him that. 35. Yeah. How do you know? Because because he he opted in. That's how I know. Because they get traded. That's why he opted in. That's what he said. Because no one no one. Decent That's what he said. Him. That's what he said. Right. You can afford him. The Magic. Is that what he said, though, right? Yep. He said he opted in to get traded, right? Yeah, and they're working on it. And he said there are more, there are more lied about that. Quickly. The quickly part. Did he lie about that? That's what he said, right? <laughs> yeah. So, said, we'll so, trade you, we'll, yeah. Well, yeah, being traded quickly was the, was the word. So then that's why he opted in. I'm just asking. I'm just you saying he opted in. I'm just telling you why he opted in based on what he said. So yeah, not you're not in the AFLW 76er. Yeah, for sure. So we're not going to believe James. Uh, I mean, I I could bring up 30 examples of why we shouldn't, but yeah, I mean the same thing we could bring up about not believing Maury. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but. I would I would have an easier time swallowing all of this if James wasn't on the record a month ago saying he totally understands both sides of this pull, pull and tug, of a player being granted. All, all, all guys understand both sides. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's easy to say that in an interview, but That's when you have a month they, later, they, they, all, the they, they all understand both sides, and the team does too, but that does not stop them from moving the guy. That does not stop them from going in and saying, hey, a guy has no leverage. We're going to offer him less than we know he's worth. Like I said last week, I think a lot of this could have maybe been avoided if someone just placed a friggin' phone call to either his people or him. And we're like, don't freak out. We're going to you're going to see a report that says we're pulling him off the trade block. and He's coming to training camp. Don't believe that. We're still trying to trade you. We're getting screwed in contract negotiation in, in uh, trade negotiations. Yeah, he ain't trying to hear that. That's what. We, that, that's the part that, like, what you just said, we're getting screwed. That's the part that I'm trying to say. You value you value him more in the trade than you do in the, in the contract. Yeah. Okay, so a player ain't, isn't trying to hear that. Mm. Yeah, but he understands that. Yes, he understands it. He just doesn't care. Just like the team understands it, and they don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Works both ways. Yes, that's all I'm saying. But the quicker that I could just say the the quick. If I was Maury, I'd be like, okay, the quicker the Clippers value look, you look, more. I'm not questioning. Right. No, I'm not. I'm not saying Maury's wrong. No, no, no. I know. I know. I'm saying but that he's aware. If I if I was Maury, I'd be like, well, dude, yeah. The, the quicker he's, the Clippers he, value you, tell him to call for more. Maury is aware of what he's doing. He's aware of what's happening. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. They, they're aware. They know. They just, they going to do what's best for them. James is trying to do the same. Right now he has a contract, and they're saying right now you got to show up. I'm not a player, but he, if you he, were, he may very well do that, but that doesn't mean the relationship is going to be good. If I'm empathizing for the player in this regard, I, I find it weird. Maybe he is. Maybe uh, we have. He obviously wouldn't say this, but I would be a little pissed off at the Clippers too, though. 
I, I'd call my agent and be like, dude, what's holding this up? Why? What are they offering them right now? Who, what are they offering? Oh, Marcus Morris, Covington, and, 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 and Batum. Like, what? That's not going to get it done for me, dude. But what are they doing? Do they want me or not? That's what I, I mean. Like, personally, if I wanted to go to the other team, I'd be like, dude, what are they? I mean, what do they want and what are they offering? Like, let, let's get this done. Give it, do they want me? If they want me, they'll give up Terrence Mann or a first round pick. I mean, that's it, right? Yeah. But like, because then that means that team doesn't want you that bad. All the stuff about the Clippers want him. Like, really? Well, I mean, show show us. I really do hope we get a deal done with the Clippers because I want to see what the end actual trade is in the end, at the end of the day. I want to see what they actually agree to to do this. Um, that leads us into our final topic here perfectly. Uh, so Howard Beck recently wrote an article and reported that there are three or four teams counting the Clippers that have some interest in James Harden. Um, mm. So we know about the Clippers, but people are having a tough time guessing who the other teams are. So my question to you guys Double, double question here. Uh, what kind of criteria would there be for a team to want to trade for James Harden? And uh, do you guys have any guesses or suggestions of who the other teams may be involved in the James Harden sweepstakes? Yeah, I, I think the um, – I don't think the – trans. I mean, the, the trade – how can I say it? I don't think the people – Wanting James is more of the issue. I think it's more of what the Sixers are wanting in return is the issue. Um, I, you know, when you sent that the questions, I started thinking about some possible teams that I feel that would trade James for James. I just don't think the Sixers would take back what they would offer. You don't have over. There's no overlapping ones like teams that would trade and the teams that we would trade for, or uh, teams that we would want to trade with. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, obviously we would trade with Portland, but Portland's not doing that. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's teams that we would trade James to if if we got if we got Dame Lillard, they would Sixers would do it in a heartbeat. Work it out. You need to work it. Portland. Yeah, yeah. Port, Port, but Portland would. That's what I'm saying. I just think it's more teams that would take James and we wouldn't take what they have back versus teams that would, you know, the Sixers would take. I think it's more teams that would take James and the Sixers not liking the deal versus teams that, you know, we would take a deal and they not want James. Yeah. Um, it's a good mix. That I believe that would take James, but we wouldn't take – the deal back, Chicago. Mm, that's my one of mine. <laughs> yeah. um, a team that we haven't talked about, I think, would take James that we wouldn't take anything back is Minnesota. They're on that list of of, of betting suitors or um, trade suitors. Minnesota. I mean, but we're not taking um, you know Conley. We're not taking Mike back. Um, obviously, they would take Edwards. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they're not moving yeah, him. Sure. <laughs> but they're not moving him. You know what I'm saying? That's. Chicago's not moving Levine, but they would move DeMar. DeMar. Um, but we wouldn't take DeMar. So I was kind of stuck on whether Miami would do it. But mm, that's my other team. I think Miami would do it, but if they don't get Lillard, they would do it. And But more is not going to take Kyle. You want Hero? I don't know. Like, I don't know if he, they would do it. You, you see so what I'm saying? Who the Heat or us? Us. Yeah. Because Hero has a deal. He has a long term deal, so it, it goes right into what you tr not trying to do. I really, yeah. So what? what uh, I heard that they were gonna well, they were willing to package picks with Hero. I, I agree with that, but what I'm saying is, then everything that you're talking about doing as far as saving the salary cap next year is done. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I'm just saying that it's Tyler Hero, but is Tyler Hero going to be the guy that you feel is not? Is Tyler Hero going to be the guy that the Sixers are going to abandon the plan for? That's that's the question yeah. I'm asking. Yeah. So let so I think it's, 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 teams, it's teams that'll take James. I know it's teams that'll take him. I think it's the Sixers that are holding that part up. Unless you think you can flip Hero, have make have him have great stats this year, one less year on his contract, and then flip him. 
His contract's not awful. Yeah, I mean, you you probably think you can, but you don't know because he has to come there and 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 play. Yeah, <laughs> you know what a I'm lot saying? of variables. Yeah. yeah. Um. So on the surface of of teams, the criteria, I would say teams one of these things either needing a big change. Uh, a veteran team who's got a strong group of, of personalities, either on the roster or at the coach, a uh, team in win-now mode, um, a team that needs a floor general point guard to make it easier for their guys to get buckets. Um, for all the teams that are rumored, I picked three. I went Bulls. Uh, possibility one would be – possibility one, Levine – that would be two factors, though. Do the Bulls want to blow it up and clear out their cap space? Because they'd have like – $62 million in expiring money between DeRozan and Harden. They'd have like one year of still very competitive ball game with that roster with Harden, DeRozan, and, and Vooch. Um, Harden would make Vooch's life really easy. They'd have, they'd have a killer pick and roll, actually, those two. Um, we'd have to attach assets to that to get that done for Levine. And is Levine the kind of star that Maury wants to give that, like, assets – and that kind of money, too, because, I mean, if he's being picky about cap space, forget about it. I mean, Levine makes 43 next year, so. Yeah, but we're not getting a, a free agent of Mike Levine in the market. So, yeah, that, I mean, it all comes – that's what – I mean, but if they think they can, I mean, they might be delusional, Eric. So, I mean, I, I don't know what they're thinking at this point. <laughs> so, Levine I – mean, I'm, I'm telling you right now they can't. They're free agents. Because you, you're looking at what these young guys are signing for with their own team that probably aren't better than Levine. Yeah. And as big as Levine's so, contract looks now. That's what I'm saying. So how are you going to get those guys? How are, you going to get them to leave? how are you going to get them to leave those contracts? The guys that you said you want to get. You'd have to either overpay a player that you really believe in or a guy who is toward the end of his career – um, that who wants to partner up with Embiid? Yeah, I mean, God, like I mean, for instance, the, the younger guys are getting their max. Yeah, that's the problem. So, for instance, like, like a Paul George or Kawhi. Let's say this year goes bad for the Clippers. One of those guys would be like, "Look, I, I want to play with Embiid. You're gonna get, you're gonna give me forty yes. million. I'll play with Embiid. Yes. I'll do that. I max, I, I, max I, Embiid. I can see that. Yes. So a guy in his mid thirties. You know, trying to go with uh, uh, the, the same window with Embiid, but, but but the team that he's with have to not want to pay him. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Or equal money, and at this point, he just thinks it's a better shot with them than he does with the Clippers. I don't know. Yes, That's but the, but then we go into the where guys want to live if it's equal. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah, that well, that's the biggest barrier of all, right? Um, if we did a uh, Levine, I went down that road, 43 million next year, Maxi's 13 cap hold and beats 51. We'd have one Oh seven on the books. Assuming we would get rid of anyone else with any kind of cap hold. Just assuming that, um, that would leave us with 42 to spend about 10 to 12 in vet min contracts. That would give us about a $30 million player or like two fifteen ish million dollar players. So forget the cap space plant. If that's the thing, um, if you go the DeRozan route, you get a guy who's willing to play here for the year, a non-disgruntled version of James, so to speak. Um, he's making considerably less than James. Um, we'd probably, we maybe even get a pick out of that. So we get an asset and DeRozan. We'd still clear all kinds of cash space. Maybe DeRozan likes it here and signs for less than he did. I mean, he's making 28 this year. Maybe he signs for 22 next year. You could still get a max player in the con in the uh, offseason. Um, that would be the other one and we still and we still remain competitive this year. So you're you're not going to MB going, well, we got rid of James. We're just punting the season. You you wouldn't say that with DeRozan. You're 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 still contending, right? You still contend with DeRozan on on the current roster. Yeah, yeah I believe that. But but you're saying that Max is your lead guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you take a flyer on Lonzo Ball and hope he comes back eventually. I mean, I think he will, but he's not coming back this year. They said you possibly here, right? February? You know, he's a January. Right now. Yeah, he's a January. That's like what That's he's hoping like, for. 
Yeah, right, yeah, but you right. can't you can't you can't count on that. Um count on that. Second team. I went off of yours, different than yours. I went the Bucks for this one. Um this is a team that would possibly maybe want to change it up. Um I went Drew for Harden. Um around the same age, around the same money. Um, he has a player option for next year. Maybe he opts out for a, a longer term deal. Maybe not. Um, the reason why the Bucks would possibly do it, make Giannis's life easier on offense, give him easier buckets the way they did with Embiid. Maybe. Uh, other than that, I don't see why they would do, why they would do that. Um, just to change it up, maybe. I, I, I and you know. said they would make that move for who? Drew. And Drew? No way. No way. Um, just because you can't give them Drew. You can't get a Sixers through out of that. What do you mean? Oh, you, you can't, can't get the Sixers. Yeah, you can't. Get oh, them. oh, oh, they wouldn't want to give us Drew. You're yeah. saying yeah. you got to send Drew somewhere else. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's Drew. Yeah. Um, and then the last one, I went Miami. Um, they ever get tired of the whole Blazers fiasco? I started kicking around ideas of hero. I had not been a hero fan. Good, he's a good high volume scorer. He's a three point shooter. He's done pretty well when they've given him short spurts at lead guard for distributing for people. I, I'm not saying he's a full time point guard, but he can take it up and, and be the lead guard in short spurts with Maxi. We get killed on defense. Um, our scoring would be incredible though between him and Maxi and and B. We'd have to like like seventy or eighty points a game between those three guys. Um, the money would be pretty good. I know his contract, people complain about it, but once the NBA does that new TV deal and, the, and its cap skyrockets, hero making 27, 28 a year is not going to seem like a lot. It's just not. Um, he's on the hook next year for 29. So if you combine, I went down this road too. So 29 next year with Maxi's 13, uh, cap hold and bead. Um, after the vet men's, We'd have about forty-four million left to spend, so you could still get your max, max, max guy if, if, if there's anyone even there, or you get two twenty-somethings uh, instead. So, would you rather have Would you rather have Levine for forty-three or a hero at twenty-nine? Levine. Really? Yeah, you didn't think about that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think Levine's the number one guy for us. This maybe have a, we have a chance to get. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love that. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd love that deal. I think you'd fit There's well. other guys that I would love to have. I just don't think. We're not we, realistic, we, though, right? Not have, it's not realistic. Yeah, I know. And he paired well with Maxi. I think the Bulls are the kind of team that if things go really bad there to start the year and, like, there's rumors of him being unhappy, that's when they maybe be like, all right, we're, we'll, we'll talk. Let's talk. Well, you can give us a hard and a pick or something like that. I don't I don't know. But I think at that point, they might be more – that's the kind of team that might be more willing to talk once the season gets going and things are bad for them. Yeah. Do you have New Orleans? Did New Orleans ever cross your mind No. For what, though? I mean, I think New Orleans can, can take them, but, I mean – CJ McCollum? I don't know if, don't know if they're going to give up CJ. CJ, I would take CJ for James. I don't think they would. I don't think the Sixers would. Yeah. I would, you know, because I've known CJ since he was a, a younger, younger young man, um, being from the same hometown. But I, I just, I don't think the Sixers would do that. Um, but I believe New Orleans would. Yeah, yeah, I think they would. Talk about making guys' lives easier. He make he would make Zion and, and Ingram's life easier for sure. Harden would. I think he would gel better to that kind of team too. He'd be closer to Houston too. Yeah, true. Sure. It's true. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I don't, we, I don't think we'd take McCollum. I don't think we would. Yeah, he would be a nice pairing with Maxi though. It's like a it's like a kind of like yeah, a game, so game situation. I don't know about it's defensive. It's the same same situation. I mean, that's not. Like Levine, he's just an older, you know. Yeah. I'm just saying, I just think that 
CJ will be who CJ is <laughs> with Max. He's going to be the same guy. Like, he's yeah. not going to be any better. He's not going to be any worse. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, so. Yeah, I think he has three years left in his contract. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. They, yeah six was not going to be that. Yeah, it doesn't really go with the, the Maury uh, timeline. Now, hero and picks, it's enticing. I don't know. Because that cast base plan can still happen. Because you could just trade, you could try, you could try to boost Hero's stock and trade him in the offseason for a bigger contract. And you also traded James to Miami. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with the hero taking that on, it's 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 more variables that have to work out. He's got to stay healthy, he's got to, you know, put up big numbers like you're hoping he kind of boosts his stock a little bit. It's just, it's just a lot more variables and you know. Yeah, I mean, if we're if we're making a trade to move the guy to be in the same situation, then why make the trade? Yeah, yeah. I guess to possibly have more options in the next six months to eight months. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you'd be basically saying, you know, James not coming back. Which, oh yeah, well I thought, I mean, I saying, if not- James not coming back, then Tobias is going to be a free agent. So it's just. You won't, if you want guys to be free agents, then you're set up for guys to be free agents. Why make a move? Then? Yeah. Because they want to pro, – a part of them wants to stay competitive for this season. And we, if yeah, James doesn't show up, he won't be. Yeah, but that's ship of sale um, already. With James on the roster, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, we're going to be competitive with him on the roster. Whether he plays or not, we can be competitive. We just – you know, the odds of us – Getting past second round and winning championships aren't very high. Um, yeah, we can be competitive, um, but the, the amending that relationship, I don't, I don't. That's not going. That's not happening. Yeah, and, I, I, and I'm talking about with James showing up to camp. That relationship is is severed. Mm. Yeah. Gosh. Um. Hopefully, the Clippers, you know, put a put man and boss into that trade yeah. and give some so, trade. Someone to publicly call you out as a liar publicly said he never wanted to be like that's you don't, move, you don't recover from that <laughs> that's you can buy guys gonna be buy guys but you're not that's never gonna be the same yeah hmm. maybe in like 10 or 20 years they do like an anniversary of that Houston Rockets team that almost won it it they they won't be the same then either <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just because people you, man, I'm sure everyone's been in the room and can come converse with someone that they don't really care for. Yeah, yeah. you just get along. You just you, you make can it through that event. Same room. You can be in the same room. Yeah. I don't mean you like them. <laughs> Some marriages like that. <laughs> oh yeah, but do you think that's more from James's side or Maury's side? Like oh, if Maury, tra- if Maury I, I, traded James next week, you think James would still be like, I'm still done with you? Or you think Maury would be like, nah, I man. I don't you think James be- has an interest in, in in dealing with him because I I firmly believe that James felt like he made, you know, not the other way around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my opinion. That aspect too. Yeah. My opinion from all I've done for you to help your career, Yes, you got me out of Oklahoma City, but it wasn't like you were the only one. But for what I've done for your career, this is where we are. Mm -hmm. This is just me, in my opinion, talking as if I'm James. Yeah. Mm, Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that does it for us. We'll um, hopefully... Maybe the maybe there was a trade that happens next week, but I doubt it. Um, but we're over I'm six weeks away from uh, from training camp beginning, so it's around the corner now. Starting to get closer. We got football season coming up here in a little bit, and then we got actually the uh, MSU plays next Friday night. Yeah, football make you go faster. Yeah, so. that's for it'll, sure. It'll that's pass time. Yeah. Those <laughs> weeks, those weeks shorten real fast when you have a game on Thursday, huh? Yeah. yeah. Football <laughs> make you go faster. <laughs> All right, guys. Well. We'll see you guys next week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. All right. Take it easy. All right, guys. Be felt.